other questions from the audience? And then if, if not, we'll go to the LA Times. First of all, um, to discover something is indeed structural would take time. It's not anything you could make an inference about quickly. Secondly, we know there's a lot of hysteresis around the unemployment process. So the speed of expanding employment uh, really matters for how it plays out over time. The slower it happens, uh, the more some workers lose skills, some workers stop searching. Uh, and so the process goes more poorly after that. Uh, I don't think that with suitable macro policies um, there's any reason to think that in time we won't go back to a more normal level of employment when the economy is doing well. Uh, I think we have to recognize this was an enormous hit on the economy. Um, we're fortunate that uh, the Fed and the Treasury acted so dramatically uh, to prevent our sliding into something as bad as the Great Depression. Uh, the bailout of the large banks, as unpleasant as it is in contemplating, was absolutely essential for getting the economy going. We would have much, much higher unemployment if it wasn't for that. Uh, and so we're starting from a place that is unusually high unemployment, uh, and I think the process is going to be slow, and that's painful for the whole economy, painful obviously for the people having trouble finding jobs. But I'm a believer in markets. I'm a believer in capitalism. I think the economy is very adaptive. Uh, workers and employers adapt to what will work to make the economy function. And so I see no reason to think that once we get fully over this, we don't go back to normal times. Oops. I think there were two people on the line from Bloomberg. Am I correct? Right. Right. Uh, Rich Miller from Bloomberg. Uh, congratulations. I, I guess this raises the question, of, I think you, you said at one point the, the, the prize opens up to vistas and opportunities for chances. In light, in light of that, uh, uh, do you have any plans to withdraw your name uh, uh, from consideration as a, a Fed uh, governor? No, I do not. And I'm told to ask you to please mute your phones or mute your, if you're on the call in line, it might make the sound quality a little bit better. Um, I believe there's a, a few international callers, one from the UK. Am I correct? And all right, if not, I think there was uh, AFP from France. No, I'm from Chile. Uh, any, we had a few other calls. Okay, if a woman from Chile. Take your question. Yeah. Hey, we can. Yes, we can take your question. Okay. Congratulations, Professor Diamond. This is Ms. Salaroles. I'm calling you from Chile. A country that I know that you know, that you visited some years ago. And also you write about uh, Chilean system retirement. So I want to ask uh, a particular question. I mean, in your study, what is the conclusion? What is the challenges that you see for Chilean pension system? I'm not sure I, I heard the question right, so let me just assume it's a general question about Chilean pension reform. I think the uh, addition of the solidarity pension, a form of citizen's pension, along with the individual accounts, is a large step in the right direction. Uh, individual funded accounts that, as Chile pioneered uh, and as Chile has worked hard to keep the costs down, are, can be an important and valuable part of a pension system. 
uh, but by themselves they don't do enough for helping people with short careers in the formal labor market, uh, and that, of course, includes uh, to a large extent women. And so I think it's very valuable that the Bachelet government has pursued uh, putting on a second layer uh, of pensions, and I think that's a move in the right direction. Okay, we have another question right here. Kurt Hickes from WBUR. I've been on my radio station before talking about how to fix Social Security. This uh, work that you've done that you're getting recognized for is, is the, maybe a relatively small portion of everything you've done in your career. Can you just talk about how it fits into, you know, maybe your, your central love? Um, and, um, and what is it about MIT as an institution that's, that's um, let you craft all these different areas? Okay. First of all, in, in terms of economics, I don't think of myself as having a central love. I think of myself as finding something uh, interesting and important to work on, working on it until, if you'll excuse an economist's expression, diminishing returns sets in. <laughs> and then I look for some other area where I have uh, uh, a possibility of working something out that uh, would be useful. I get a lot of stimulus in finding things to work on from teaching both undergraduates and graduates here at MIT. Uh, you stand up in front of this uh, collection of very sharp minds and your mental equivalent of adrenaline is flowing. You don't want to make a fool of yourself and you also want to find your own way of describing uh, the issues that you're trying to teach as well as getting the students familiar with the literature that already exists. So the feedback from teaching, from thesis supervision, to my own research has been enormous, uh, and that's a tribute to the students. And the feedback from interacting with my colleagues, the department has an exceptional pattern of people relating across different subdisciplines. So I talk regularly to not just the public finance economists, uh, but pretty much everybody in the department. And so that, again, serves as a stimulus for somebody who recognizes when diminishing return sets in, or perhaps a bit after it has set in, uh, and starts looking for new things. Okay. Do we have other calls from, uh, inquiries from the audience? I, I, just tell us who you are. Yes, hi, I'm Rose Krasny with Reuters. Um, Take my question. Um, you wrote back in uh, 2005 uh, a very interesting paper with, with Peter Ozark about saving Social Security. Um, are you disappointed that not enough has been done in the past five years to work on some kind of plan to, to shore up Social Security? And what, what do you think should be done now? Uh, Social Security as you well know, is called the third rail of politics for a good reason. Uh, there are an awful lot of people who care a great deal about it. When the system is out of balance as it is now, there's no way of restoring it to long-run balance that doesn't include painful ingredients. So the political process of getting it to happen is not easy. And sure, I'm disappointed. I wish something good had happened. Uh, but on the other hand, it's a slow process, so I'm also not surprised. Uh, I have not revisited the numbers in any detail, uh, but I don't see any reason uh, to think that a revised plan along the lines of what Peter Orzag and I worked out wouldn't be a perfectly good answer today. And uh, did we have a Wall Street Journal reporter calling in? Um, possibly not, so we'll take one more question from the audience. AP again? I just have one quick question. You mentioned about the bank bailout. There's been a lot of public discussion about another element about the stimulus and whether that's big enough, not big enough. There's you know, a lot of discussion on both sides. People saying we need to put a lot more money into that to have it up work. Other folks saying that it's just a political spend. Do you have any thoughts on, on the stimulus? I think with the latest reports of increasing layoffs in state and local government, uh, further <coughs> moves by the federal government uh, to help the state and local governments keep up employment of teachers, police officers, 
fire workers, uh, social workers, uh, would be valuable for what they accomplish and valuable for how it helps stimulate the economy. Uh, so I think another stimulus bill, uh, the extension of the unemployment benefits, which I'm sure is going to happen sooner or later, but let's get it in place sooner. Uh, these are things that I think are valuable. Uh, the first stimulus uh, was, to my mind, unquestionably extremely valuable. As high as our unemployment is now, it would be a lot higher without that. That's been agreed to by a number of, of detailed and studies. Um, whether it was uh, not big enough, uh, with hindsight, that's hindsight. Uh, I think more important is to focus on what we should be doing now. And now uh, what's happening is nervous making, and so I think it's important uh, to address it. Just, you had a question? Bob Gavin from the Boston Globe. Can you per tell us how uh, you got onto this particular work? What caught your interest about it? Uh, the it's a long story. This is the last question. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I indicated before, I've long been interested in the actual dynamics in the economy. Back in the 60s, uh, there was a lot of attention paid to whether you could find a process so that an economy could find its way to a standard description of an equilibrium. And it seemed to me that a much better question was think about realistic dynamics and just see where they go. And maybe they go to something resembling the traditional model, and maybe they don't. Uh, and so the first thing I wrote was one with uh, a shockingly large effect from uh, a seemingly very small friction. Uh, and that was not meant to be realistic. It was meant to make the theoretical point uh, that analysis of these frictions could really change the analysis. Uh, I, through the um, 70s, I kept revisiting um, this line of, of work. I uh, wrote a couple of papers with Eric Maskin back when he was on the faculty here, uh, applying it around law and economics questions with uh, contract rules, uh, and then moved into uh, modeling it on the labor market. Uh, what I can say w is for me at the technical end, it was reading a paper by Dale Mortensen uh, using Poisson processes that made me realize that there really was a tractable way uh, to get a real handle on some of these issues, uh, rather than the methods I had been using before I read his paper. Are you a Red Sox fan? Can you compare this to October 2004? Last question after that. First of all, if you go to the department website, you'll see me throwing out a first pitch. And so, yes, I'm very much uh, a Red Sox fan. Uh, and jokingly, I said to my nephew, who is a Yankees fan and lives in New York, uh, when I called to tell the family about this, that this was almost as good as 2004. And he said, no, it's better. And I agreed. <laughs> okay. We just want to make sure I did not miss any international calls on the phone. Time for one more question. Okay. Just um, let us know who you are, please. Uh, this is Marcela Dallas from the Mercurio from Chile. Okay. Yes, yes. Your question, please. Can you tell us your question? Okay. Professor Diamond, you talk about unemployment on the uh, United States, but here in Latin America, uh, in countries like Chile, we are living an economic boom moment. But also, we have high unemployment rates. How can your studies can apply to, by policy makers to, to resolve this kind of contradiction? Since I have not uh, studied anything in the Chilean economy for a long time and has certainly not paid any attention to the macro circumstances, I won't speculate how it might relate to what I've done. Okay. I think that's all we have time for. 